uh, one of the horrendous things I say I've seen is this coming up this village one morning um, after we've been told the village has been attacked and to see the bodies lying there, women, children, you know, um, men that had been killed overnight, blood everywhere. It was heart wrenching. But um, yeah, you, 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 you know, kind of ask yourself, what is the meaning of all this and who are behind all this and what is going on here? But it's not just one, but you see it again and again and again. You, you get to places where bomb, a bomb had just exploded and uh, a lot of people like, have been killed and there are bodies again all over the place. You have to visit the people in the hospitals. You have to again go back, meet families, you know, you, you cry with them, you, you console them, you, you do the best you can all the time. And you yourself have been shot at. What happened then? <laughs> I was shot at. I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, there was this attack that was going on um, uh, and then I came in with a small camera just to see if I could get some of the videos uh, and pictures if I could. And just as I got into this place and there was a lot of gunshots. So we, a friend of mine that we're together with, we just turned a corner and then we saw this little military truck that came. And this soldier just came out of the truck from nowhere. And by the corner of my eye, just to the right, I noticed a, a slight movement and I saw the soldier raising his gun and I screamed to my friend, but the gunfire came. My friend was hit in the back. I, we just, I went straight on the floor and the bullets scattered everywhere. I mean, there were bullet holes all in the little wall that were standing uh, by. And uh, I had to do all I could to, to drag. He couldn't walk, of course. He was bleeding so much, I was afraid he was going to die. But uh, I got a friend, we tried to extract the bullet. And <laughs> thankfully, somebody who had some medical experience came in and he helped. And we got into a hospital. Um, so why is this terrible violence happening? Um, different people you ask will give you different uh, answers. Um, but generally, I think it's this collapse in the trust between Christians and Muslims in Nigeria. Uh, it hadn't been like this for a long time uh, until a few things came in. Uh, some will say it's indigenous, uh, settler question. Some is the use of politicians. Some is just the religion, um, one religion trying to dominate over the other. And so different people will always give you different reasons for this crisis. And, and of course it's persistence up till now. You've been working with some of the Muslim women yeah. in the diocese. Yes, you, you know, the, this, this horrible crisis created a lot of problems in Jaws and there was this deep distrust. Actually, the communities were separated. Christians can't go into Muslim communities and Muslims do not come into Christian communities. But you know, there was this, this time that, um, you know, our hearts, uh, particularly mine, was moved into this little Muslim girl who couldn't go to school. And I thought, well, look, this is a girl. Uh, her, husband, her dad was killed in, uh, in one of these crises. And I, I made an offer to the Muslim community to say, look, can, we, can I help um, uh, this little girl go to school? And after a long discussion, they were willing to, to let me pay her fees. But I thought to go a little further to ask how many other orphan children could there be? I mean, it's our responsibility as Christians to do something about this. So I did ask, and at first there were about seven. Then the number grew to, at, I think at some point it jumped to 25, then to 40. And as I speak to you, we have close to 160 of these Muslim children that uh, the church Anglican Diocese of Jaws is paying their fees. Um, you know, and then the women, their mothers, we thought, why don't we help them? They've lost their husbands. They can't pay these fees of these children. What can we do? Well, Nigeria is a very simple place, especially when it comes to little things that women can learn. So we taught them how to make um, confectionaries, uh, how to knead, um, you know, detergents, liquid soap, and things, little things they could sell in the market. We started with uh, about 12 women. And as I speak with you now, I have over 120 Muslim women that we interact with every day. Actually, we built it to a level where the Muslim women and the Christian women would come and sit together. They will cook and eat together. Now, in Nigeria, it's a big thing. You don't eat with your enemy because you're afraid that you'll be poisoned. But yeah, they, they interact, you know, and, and it's, just so, it's just so marvelous. You know, God created the world. He created men and women. They're, we are all his creation. There's, there's nothing we can do or say that can change that. And 
despite our deep beliefs, despite our, uh, you know, holding on to one segment of what we believe, what we think and where we, we're headed for, we still are human beings. And therefore, we must relate with one another. We must work with one another. We must also understand that ultimately, we are all going to come into the same place. In other words, like the Christian Bible says, you know, the, this world will pass away. Uh, at the end of the day, there will be judgment. But whatever it is, before then, now every human being we see is a human being first and foremost, created by God. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of them. So we cannot afford at this moment to say, no, we don't want or we don't like or, you know, I mean, things happen. I mean, even in our families, we fight, don't we? Uh, but somehow we find ways of, of sitting together despite, our, you know, different orientations and, and, and we, we talk. And I think uh, this is what is happening in Jaws, um, you know, with, with the Muslim communities that I work with. And is it making a difference, do you think? Oh, incredibly, incredibly. You know, um, two Christmases ago, like two years ago, um, there was, we were in church and then there was this little commotion outside the church and there was this um, siren that came in and this anti-bomb squad just came and stopped just beside the church. Well, of course, we couldn't come out of church by that time, but it's soon after the service, one of the Muslim um, members of the Muslim community approached me and said, uh, we are so sorry for that disturbance. It's just that we found out that there was somebody that was not from this community. He just came with a bomb and was heading to your church. But when we suspected something uh, about this movement, we called the police immediately and they called the anti-bomb squad. Now, this is a Muslim stopping an attack on a church in Jos. It's incredible. It's, it's just one of this. We build this relationship and now we begin to work with one another and we, you know, we trust one another. And we're protecting one another. I mean, this is the love that we express, you know, like the Bible says, for God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And because of this, we have this, um, you know, it's, it's just it's just the expression of love. That, that was why Jesus came. I mean, he didn't come because we we're already Christians. He came and died so that we would be Christians. And if we understand this truth, I think it's, uh, it, it behoves us, each and every one of us, to first and foremost put Christ first. And then, hey, it is his world. He will do, he will do his work, <laughs> whichever way.